Good evening and welcome to Gwinnett County Public Libraries Meet the Authors. <laughs> this evening, we are very honored to have with us artist and author of the book Diary of the Dragon's Daughter, a painting, painting as a window into Chinese history by Bilan Lau. She is with us this evening and we are very happy to have her. She survived one of the worst holocausts in human history. It took place in China. Her family experienced discrimination and hardship under the dictator Mao Zedong, losing everything they owned because her father was a doctor. She was blessed though with a variety of artistic talents. She was successful in painting, photography, fashion design, journalism, and as a teacher while she lived in China. A very wonderful accomplishment for a woman and a most unusual accomplishment in the country. Because of her talents, she was granted permanent residency in the United States of America under an, a category I've never heard of before, alien of extraordinary abilities. So we have with us a alien of extraordinary abilities tonight. So she became an American citizen earned two master's degrees in art and became an art professor. And she explores the relationship between her personal story, Chinese history and fine art in this book, Diary of a Dragon's Daughter. Thank you for joining us this evening. She's going to do a PowerPoint uh, for you uh, and talk to you about her book. I welcome Bilan. First of all, I wanna say good evening, everyone. Thank you. Dennis, for the wonderful introduction, and thank you all for coming to my presentation. Never give up your dream for freedom. My name is Binaniao, and I am excited about being with you tonight. Yeah, because when I come to America, I was 45 years old, and I did not speak English at all. So if you have trouble understanding something I say, please feel free to send a chat, okay? Just so I will, you know, so I will uh, answer the questions. I am the author of the book, Diary of the Dragon's Daughter. And uh, I am also the film director of my documentary film called An Artist's Journey from China to America. Now I would like to tell you about my painting story the first one is called a American Dream. So we'll have to bring the slides on to see. So people always ask me, what is your American Dream? My American Dream is to have the freedom of a speech to share my truth and to be allowed to express my human rights and my personal power as a woman and a citizen of the world. As an artist, having the freedom of self-expression to paint what I feel, think, and desire for myself is extremely important. In China, I do not have this freedom. The Chinese government was very controlling about the art subjects that were not allowed during the time I was there. So we go to immigrant dream. You can say the painting is tell the story about uh, my life as many immigrants come to America for the dream. When I first come to America, study hard, learning English, went to college, well, working three jobs as a dishwasher, sewing, and teaching art to children. So we, next week is about the painting. The painting. So the the painting I call The Window actually is an introduct introduction piece to my series of painting called Diary of the Dragon's Daughter, painted as the window into Chinese history. I paint the, each painting in this series to be a window into the past for people to share my journey. Also, the painting that is still around the window and me are photographs of my mother my father, my grandmother, and my other family members. On the table is an open book 
was photograph of Chairman Ma. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. And, and also I do sculpture. So the sculpture is called Boom in New China. It's about Mao Zedong declared that those who born in the New China will be have a great life. When I was born in 1954, there was terrible flood of the Xinjiang River. It was four times that. My life would not be beautiful dream, but a little bit. I sculpted the relief of myself born as a baby. I was delivered by my father, which was one of the few times in life we were lucky he was a doctor. So we got to see. So I think everybody maybe now the voice of a, a Myra radio is began broadcasting to China in 1942 in Chinese. My father had to hide under the blanket was his radio because anyone was caught, who was caught listening to a Megan radio would be punished. To me, as child, you know, have a little girl, my father looked like he was playing game. I wanted to join in the fun, but my grandmother hold me close to her. My mother was standing next to the window and my brother was watching by the door in case a neighbor may report it. You know, reported us to the authorities. I believe that the seed of my, my American dream was planted by voice of American radio. Next slide. Father's descent in the prison. I, uh, actually, I want to say father's descent prison. My father was trained in both. Chinese and Western medicine, and the belief in free speech. The government labeled there, my father a capitalist and a landlord, and took his business, our home, and everything we owned. So next the painting is about my father's hopeless. I designed the three paintings about my father. The first the painting describes my father's imprisonment and the darkness over his life. High on the wall, a small window representing my father's hopeless. In the second painting, a large poster hangs from my father's neck, neck was paper board cap on his head. He stands on a stool outside where he's being punished. That was common method during those times. A dark tornado ruled across the sky to symbolize the Chinese Cultural Revolution and underneath is a sea of red gods. Millions of students joined the red gods. My family living a fear because some red gods we often break into my home and they take anything they want. In the third and the final painting, the news hangs from the ceiling, ceiling was indication of my father was found ending on the wall. Hang as a Chinese poem asking God. So this is, I call the fist of the teeny month, I was always hungry. And my grandmother and my mother sold everything they had. They get some food for us. I remember one day in our dinner, we have a little bit of meat. It was taste like a smoked bacon. It was so good. We asked her for more. She says, she said, it's not more. We ask her, Grandma, why isn't anymore? She replied, because I only cut one small mouse. At least 45 million Chinese, we walked 
starve, starving, or beat to death in China over these four years, from 1958 to 1962. I need to fix this. Okay, sister goes to the heaven. So my computer stopped here. Let me give me one second. Okay. Because. Okay, you got it. <laughs> okay. Sorry for the for the little bit. So my nine years old sister Tao and some his classmate died at school in 1958. One day, my sister and his classmates were walking along a wall outside the school. A pile of coal suddenly shifted against the wall, covering the children with stones and coal dust. Still alive. They put it out in a classroom on her desk, but forgot her. My sister bled to death on that desk. The government will only pay seven Chinese dollars toward having beat house body to be cremated. The painting depicts my sister as she said goodbye to my parents and walk out the door to the final times. The empty chair is waiting for my sister to return. Mother's burned. In our city, no one wanted to hire my mother. Because of my father's criminal status as a capitalist. My father, my mother finally got a job transporting beauty materials using a hand dry wagon. She leads the poor full white nose of the construction materials from a storage building to the build, builders on the construction site at the top of a very steep hill. Many times, my brother and I helped my mother push the wagon up the steep hill. So that is about my aunt. I call force the marriage. My aunt joined the army for a good life. She never experienced the Chinese government will trick her and other young women into forced the marriage with the Chinese soldiers in the desert on the Xinjiang and the Russian board. Many young girls committed suicide before the group wedding. So that's even is part of the Chinese head history only taught by the families of this woman, just like my aunt. The painting is called Uneducational, Unnatural Education. Mao's government closed all the school and had the book burned and many teachers were beat. The students went to the farm for education. But my brother found it was like a hot nape camp with little to eat. And he was often cold and hungry. Many of the girls went to the farm were raped. So this painting is called Unforgettable. Express my experience. During the, during the time I worked as the waiter at age of 15, I had to leave my family and live in a morgue that had once been a temple. It was still surrounded by many griefs and ghosts. And I was afraid every night. For many years, I continued to be afraid of the dog and have nightmare, very bad dream. Uh, I finally put my fears on the canvas to release the tricks my mind had planned on me to be afraid. 
painting and play the piano on my therapy, and it helped me to face my fears. Uh, I think probably I have a little bit of time I can talk about the go to bed. So on the top left, I have incorporated the image of another unforgettable part of my journey. In 1985, I was in Tibet, in Tibet, painting a village. And I'll translate leading us to an air that had been totally destroyed. The Chinese army had bombed the village in 1950s. These innocent people run outside to see the airplanes because they had never seen plane before. They had dropped the things from the sky. They had no idea. The planes was dropping bombs and the many of them will be killed. So that is called my draining. I was 16. I began to work at a factory that had been a church. All of my co-workers are educated, but I managed to not even read and write. The factory leading us to study the mouse, write a book, okay? And every day to brainwash us. But some of my co-workers were professors offered to educate me in hiding. So my capitalist educators encouraged me to prepare for the future. So the one in the foreground, in the uh, foreground is of me as I am painting my story at my studio in Paducah, Kentucky was my memories around me. I think you know about one child policy, one child policy because many Americans adopt the Chinese girls from China. I married. When our daughter was born, he did not accept her, my daughter because he wanted a son. He treated me and my daughter as second class citizen. I took care of my daughter as single mother. In this painting, I was carrying my sick baby as I walked to the people's hospital in the middle of night. This painting is a special because of what happened to me when a Buddhist monk spoke with me during a very dark time, I, when I was sad and suffering. This painting I called, a, I want to be a nun. It's about the conversation I had with this monk. I asked the monk, can I come to be, I can't come to be alone? The monk helped me to understand that becoming a nun was not for me. I had to face the truth of my life and find the courage to never give up my dream. I call the painting freedom. Mao's government locked the Chinese people away from the rest of the world for 29 years. So while still in China in 1999, at my age of 45, so as a Dennis introduced me, said I was granted U.S. permanent residency as an alien extraordinary ability. So my daughter also received his visa. So that's, I come to America for my dream. I'm lucky. So next. Uh, so this painting I call the sweet dream uh, come to, you know, sweet dream. The sweet dream come to, come to truth. When I received two master's degree, MFA and MA in painting. And my daughter received his two master degree and his PhD. We both began full-time faculty, but the nightmare happened during the year George W. Bush was our president, you know, the September 11th. <clears throat> here, I would like to put this painting here is, uh, actually this also is part of my book. Uh, the painting is called, uh, uh, where are you from? It is from my series of painting called Come Into Tibet. The series 
separate the Tibetan people by depicting their religion, spirit, the daily lives, and the rich colors and pattern of the clothes, and also architecture. I have been to Tibet three times and enjoyed the painting these Tibetan people because they helped me catch the questions. We always ask, ask you know, one another, where are you from? So I learned we are all to realize that no matter where are you from, we all share the same humanity and have a compassion for one another deep inside ours. So we go the next one is called Dream of Love. So I was 62. I found my dream of love, 62. So I found my dream now. This is a painting. It's my wedding day being unite. Uh, was my dream husband. I would like my husband to read the poem. So and also uh, into uh, news about my book. And after I will answer the questions. Coming. <laughs> Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. This is my happy day, and I had an opportunity to write a poem about our marriage, and I'm pleased to share that. And I like to say to Belen, I'm such a lucky man, and thank you for finding me, because now I'm not alone. Thank you for loving me so my heart does not turn to stone. Thank you for marrying me and turning our house into a happy home, and thank you for spending your life with me so we can sing and dance our happy song. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. And uh, we here with just uh, uh, a few examples of my uh, work and a story. And uh, I, my wish is that my work will help others find the courage to never give up a dream of freedom. So, and uh, also you can see, uh, here, I would like to also, can you can introduce about my book information? And after I will uh, answer the questions. Yes, for those who might be interested in Beland's book, it has a lot of beautiful art. She has even more series of paintings in addition to the painting as a window into Chinese history and coming into Tibet. There's a very special series uh, called Women Suffering in the War, another beautiful set of paintings, and My yeah. American Dream. Yeah, next one, next, next slide. So, so, and actually the, the, the book is on the Amazon.com and also my website from Publishing House. So you have questions. I saw the chart has nine questions here. Denise, would you like to bring the questions? Absolutely, I, I would love to. Uh, one of our guests would like to know, is there anywhere here in Georgia where your art might be on display so they could go and, and actually see it in person? Yeah, actually uh, right now, because when I'm married to my husband, <laughs> I have sold my gallery, so I actually, I my gallery is in my house. Okay. Yeah, 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 my gallery, I have, yes, yeah, so we, if you like it, we can organize and people and the come here, yes. Okay, thank you. So we'll send them to your website to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. um, we want to know, do you have another book planned in your mind that you might be working on? Um, are you going to do that so we can uh, enjoy another book from you? Uh, probably had either wait for a while because right now I'm more focused on the film, on the film. Yeah. So and also I have to create more paintings. Yeah. So I have a lot of lists. That I need a painting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I understand that. That makes sense. Um, and on your website are are there also prints for sale? Um, if uh, of some of your paintings, do you, you sell signed prints as well as uh, originals and the book? Uh, 
I, 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 I didn't catch it. Can you, you don't have any prints. Yeah, I don't have. Yeah, I have prints. Okay. Yeah, I have okay. prints, and the, I have prints. That, yeah, I just uh, say what, but I just just right now I was focused on the, you yes. know, so, yeah. So, um, so I actually didn't <laughs> find only in the book right now. That's I, all right. Actually, yeah, that is it. It it we we host authors all the time, and focusing on a book, it is 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 something that can take all of your energy and i i know as an artist that that does probably take some of your time away from your work um uh ms lawinger would like to know or mr lawinger i'm sorry no last name do you see any parallels between what you experienced in china and what is going on in the united states right now with culture before she answers that, let me just say it back to the previous point. One of the things interesting about Beeline is uh, she's certainly happy to share her book and sell that um, and prints of her paintings, but her deepest goal is to have the continued freedom of speech and to paint her experiences as you have seen. And her final goal is to have her artwork in museums so many people can enjoy them. And that's why the book came about. That's why she's promoting her uh, films and so forth. And certainly people who might enjoy uh, the videos that are on her website and buy the book, we're happy about that. And uh, a group may have to keep it somewhat small. We were more than happy for them to come, come to, to see the gallery, yeah, see gallery. Uh, but unlike some artists or uh, writers, they're really pushing hard to sell their book, and that's great. There's nothing yes. wrong with that at all, but uh, these are really vehicles for her artwork to share with other people, which brings us right back to this question about parallels. She left China to have the freedom uh, to paint. So, Yeah, I actually, that. in China, before I I was in China was successful. That's the reason I got my, you know, exchange ability because I was, yeah. So I have um, much, much, just many tenants. I was the how to, actually this was a part in my documentary film, how I began uh, working in the child labor, 40 years old and it began very successful in China, how to my life in the build up. So when things, uh, in, for right now, China has, uh, people have a very good economy, like my family, they have a good, but they don't have the freedom, like American, you can free speech, you can say anything. And like my book, you can uh, publish my book in China. Yeah, so it is, uh, is uh, and you can be rich in China, but you cannot be freedom. So have the freedom for speech, freedom. So what do you want to, like, you know, I'm an artist. The freedom is very important for me. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, one of us observed that the a window, literally windows are in a lot of your paintings, a lot of them. I would say at least a dozen, maybe more. I thought that was very interesting. Um, and then it, it made me think about, you had to have done it on purpose because I, uh, obviously the word window is in the title of your book because the paintings are a window into your life, but you have the window over your father that you showed us in the, in the uh, PowerPoint with the light coming through. You have the windows where the, um, the whole room is, is devastated and turned upside down. It's very, very common. Uh, theme in your in your painting and of course Microsoft uses the words window we talk about so I, I wanted to know this has to be a, a, a thoughtful thing you did because windows are so prominent in the paintings yeah when to uh, actually you know we artists we we do the painting we try to find the things we try to the concept and the conversation ideas so the window for me, just we should use a painting as the window to look inside the Chinese history 
So mm -hmm. that is, the, is like a message. We threw the window to look back to that. So there's most of the paintings, so all my painting has the window or has the door. So that's it, yeah, it, it, yeah. So for, for this, so try to also window and also can create a more, um, another things is a, a, about a painting perspective for. The window can bring inside, inside and outside. So yeah, so for, for, for perspective for, so we, we are painting, you know, you know, I said, I think you know a lot about painting, Dennis. Yeah. And painting is you have made a lot of changes. I change it a lot when painting. Yeah, because the spatial, the concept. And because my you see, all my painting is not really painting from life. If a painting from life are much easy. I paint a portrait for easy. I can see the value, I can see the color. And I so I can choose the conversation way. But when painting this painting, you use the memory and ideas and the image or put together, you have found a way how to uh, you unite together in the lighting, you know, so banners, you know, so every, you know, so this, yeah. So so window also can be each everywhere because the window also repeater also will be continued in the also another way to say it too. Just meaning I don't very know clever. It's yes it does. It's very clever, but it was a clearly a, a theme in, in those paintings. Um, Mary Ann would like to know what happened to the rest of your family and did your daughter make it to the United States? Yeah, we, my daughter and I come to America almost same year. Yeah, we come to same year. She's living in Atlanta and I have two grandsons. So I'm the grandma. I take care of kids, two grandsons every week, every week, two times. <laughs> oh, excellent. Yeah, um, happy family. I, so yeah, I'm a retired early because I want to be my family with my husband and my daughter and you know the children so that's yeah i moved to Atlanta. i had the i have beautiful beautiful uh gary in Paducah. i think that my book has you know she, yeah so you i think you have my uh first book my second book is published in 2019. Yes, i do oh i do not have yes i do not have your second book i have your first yeah yeah second book has more uh yeah more uh, yeah more update, yes. Oh, excellent, thank you. Okay, um, I noticed um, that some of the stories in the book that you tell, because you use words to share with us as well as paintings, um, I, I was struck by the fact that there's so many stories hidden inside the story of your book. For, you know, Lisa C., the wonderful, amazing author, could make a wonderful novel just out of the story of your great grandmother and her bound feet and her terrible temper and yeah. her widowhood and her inability to ever remarry because widows couldn't remarry. So it's not just, um, there are lots of stories within a story. So I'm surprised you've never thought of writing a novel because you've got a lot of novels in your family history. I know, actually, I wrote uh, about my grand grandmother's story. It's a long story. I have the call it shorter. Yeah, so, yeah, because it's a, it's a so complicated story about my grand grandmother. Yeah, it's so complicated. And the other one is my big feet. Actually, she's normal yes. feet. Yeah, it's right. normal feet. Yeah, so she has an amazing story because she ran away from his first of her marriage. You know, this time it is not was not normal, and when uh, now she's, you know, we the, hit the story. She put it like a coal dust, the, and you know, put the put the face like a, you know, she walking you know, during the war. She walking, you know, on their, uh, you know, the runway. So just, I read a lot about it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. About, but I cannot put it all in the book. Yeah. Fascinating. She she was a fascinating woman. Um, the other thing I noticed about your book is that you, you could do a talk just on women's suffrage and what happened to women in China and, and really 
you were a woman who, who made big differences. I mean, in your story, you share about you, at one point, no one can get a divorce or the, the widows cannot remarry again. Um, lots of things. You were quite a hero because you became a, a, a female photographer and you went from, um, you didn't get a chance to talk about it, but you went from uh, working in a factory to becoming a, a, a famous a de dress designer. So there's a lot about women and women's history there. And I did wonder, are things better in China now for women? They yeah, yeah. Right now it's much better, especially there, you know, right now most of the girls in China, they, no, because they want to, uh, right now China, girls much better. Because in China, everyone want to have a boy. So they have more boy, they don't have a lot of girls to marry. <laughs> Well, and also economy, China is really economy is better. Economy is better. And there's yeah, so in my experience bef uh, my ex during my time in China, a woman really is uh, treated really very different because there is cultural and also by the Chinese uh, lot for policy. Uh, Chinese policy, they also they don't give women ego like an equal housing and you know just love things is not equal like i moved to Shenzhen, have two things to treat a woman different because i divorced i have to pay the 30 construction fee for my daughter and but if you divorce the man you don't need to pay but i changed it uh, because i changed the, this policy because they shall be you know during this time and they shall be was the president right so, and uh, we can, you know, so, and also a change in another way is the housing. So, yes, but right now I, I don't know much, lot, I don't really know a lot of, about um, China because uh, everybody don't want to talk about it. My family and I have a conversation. They have a very good income. Uh, they have very, you know, so, I, I want to say that, but we never talk about politics. Oh. Yeah. And because you know, we talk in the we charter they have, or, you know, they have government to watch it. Oh, right. They have to be careful, you're saying. Yeah, watching a scene because I have to uh, care for a little bit because they are still living in China. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, Merwin uh, wanted to say uh, us to say to you, thank you for reminding us of the precious freedoms that we enjoy in this country. Yes. And he is so right about that. So do you ever travel back to China? Yes, we did. I traveled to China 2018. Yeah, yeah, 18. So we don't have any trouble travel uh, to uh, travel back to China, yeah. But right now you cannot because of the quarantine 19. So I want to say thank you. Yeah, I, I understand how the freedom. Freedom is just like an air. You have breath. I in China, I have a lot of money, have even a lot of you know clothes, food, but you don't have you can breathe. What do you think? Absolutely. All money, nothing can help you, right? So Absolutely. freedom is so important for me, for me, I think for everyone, yeah. Absolutely. Well, we'll end on that positive note. Um, uh, on behalf of the Gwinnett County Public Library, we're so tickled that you are a Gwinnettian and live here with us now. We have stole you away from Paducah or, or Ken stole you away and we're glad you're here. We were honored to have you. Your book is beautiful. Um, everyone remember in the chat box, you can see where her website is. Um, you can check out the book, check out her videos. Thank you, everyone, for coming in this evening. And thank you so much, Ken. And thank you so much, Balan. It was a delight to be with you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Give it me was the a pleasure. Yeah, thank you.